Hello, I'm Walter Lewin. I teach physics at MIT, which is the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, which is located in Cambridge, Massachusetts, in the United States. Before you watch this presentation, you should have familiarized yourself with four concepts. Torques, moment of inertia, angular velocity, and angular momentum. I wrote them down for you. Torques, notice I started the word torques with the Greek letter ta. We often use in our mathematic equations ta for torque. So that's why I thought it was funny to put a ta there. And here you have moment of inertia, here you have angular velocity, and here you have angular momentum. So if you're not familiar with these four subjects, then you should not yet watch this presentation. First do your homework, and maybe later on in the course you can watch this program. So for now, over and out, and I'll be back very shortly. Suppose we have a spinning object which has moment of inertia about the axis of rotation, I, capital I, and angular velocity, omega. Then the angular momentum L, which is a vector, equals I, which is the moment of inertia, times the angular velocity, omega. L is a vector and omega is a vector. And the direction of the vector omega, and therefore the direction of the angular momentum L, depends on whether the rotation is clockwise or whether the rotation is counterclockwise. I want to demonstrate this to you, to show this to you with this example. I have here a potato, and I have a right-handed corkscrew, and I'm going to turn this corkscrew clockwise as seen from this direction. Notice I turn it clockwise. And what you're going to see now is that the corkscrew is going into the potato and is coming out on the other side. There it comes out. So a clockwise rotation moves the corkscrew in this direction and that is our convention for omega. So if the angular rotation is in this direction, then omega is in this direction. If now I go counterclockwise, you see that the corkscrew comes out, and so now the angular velocity omega is in this direction, and therefore the angular momentum is also in this direction. The corkscrew is now coming out of the potato. If no external torque acts on the object, then angular momentum is conserved. Let's take a situation now whereby angular momentum is conserved, but whereby the moment of inertia changes. If the moment of inertia changes and if angular momentum is conserved, then L is not going to change. I is going to change, so omega must change. I would like you to think about this a little bit on your own. Is it possible that angular momentum is conserved, and yet that still the moment of inertia changes? And what are the consequences of that? And while you add it, I would like you to also brush up on the concept of the conservation of angular momentum. In other words, discuss with your peers and with your teacher what are the conditions when angular momentum is conserved and under what conditions is angular momentum not conserved. So discuss this, stay tuned, and I'll back with you shortly.
in the absence of external torques, angular momentum is conserved. So let's look again at this equation. If there are no external torques on the system, L remains constant. So the product I, omega, cannot change. Suppose now I goes 